Good morning, guys. Good morning. Today we thought we would take you over here to a little city park near us. Um, I don't think, what's it called? Magnolia Park. It's in the town of St. Martinville, Martin. Louisiana. And we are going to give a walkthrough of our rig and showcase some of the improvements that we've made on the truck since we received our Snap Treehouse in October, well, September of 2019. I counted it up and I think we've had 60 nights sleeping in the treehouse. So we've kind of honed it down to what exactly works for us, but as everybody knows, it's an ongoing process and you always find something that you want to change. Yeah, quite often. Every time we go camping, we change. We something. find something. <laughs> so uh, we're going to start with one of our newest improvements, which is a brand new Bluetooth radio that we had installed. Actually, Red and my brother-in-law, Jeremy, installed it because the Best Buy people had no installation techs and the local radio installation place wanted to charge a ridiculous amount of money for installation. I'm talking thousands of dollars and it didn't even really take Red and Jeremy but a couple of hours yeah, to do it. About three hours. Okay, so we're gonna start with that and then we'll move on and we'll show you some of the other improvements. Folks, we installed this Boss Elite Bluetooth screen in the truck it has uh android auto or apple carplay it's a 6.75 inch screen and i really like it because it does do the maps you know it's got everything you want on it you got spotify and audible if we want to listen to a book but the uh the maps is really nice because now I got a screen up here while I'm driving the highway Paula can look at guy on her tablet it really makes things nice wasn't hard to do and uh, we got it from Crutchfield and they have excellent excellent customer service and uh, I was really amazed at how easy this thing was to put in don't get me wrong cussed a little bit but we were able to do this in, like I said, a couple of three hours. Not too bad. We put this roof rack on here as, as one of the first additions. I got this, uh, this set up here at Pack and Paddle for a hundred bucks. I don't even think it was that much. It was, it was they, they were having a garage sale at Pack and Paddle. So I bought the rack over there, 75, 100 bucks, something like that. And then we wasn't really sure if we were gonna use it or not. So we went and bought a little cargo basket. We bought the cheap one at Walmart. You know, I wasn't gonna spend a bunch of money on a basket if we didn't even sure we were gonna use it. So we bought this little cheap cargo basket. We've used it actually quite a bit. Holds our gas cans. Gas cans, uh, we put chairs on there, you know, just whatever, whatever we want, you know. It, it's come in useful, I guess. We've used it a little bit. Up on top, I now have two energy solar 100 watt solar panels. And uh, I mounted all of that myself, built the little mounts and uh, put them up there. Not hard to do. Ran the cables back down along the camper. And then I came over here and we went uh, into the bed to our inverter. I'll show you that in a minute. A lot of people don't know that the sleeping platform actually pushes up and it gives you six feet of head space. You can actually stand up, walk around, do whatever you need to do when you're in the bed of the truck when the sleeping platform is pulled up. Okay, we're not gonna exercise in the truck. That's ridiculous. <laughs> we purchased this, was not given to us. Not sponsored. We're not, yeah, not sponsored by Energy, uh, a little company out of Idaho. I did a little research on all the different battery banks they had at the time, and there's plenty more now, Jackery. You got the Yeti, the Goal Zero. 
and uh, I seen a blue eddy and some other things like that. I thought this would work for us. They actually have a better unit now that's stackable. But I was able to take this one. Only weighs 25 pounds. This thing is pretty light. Lithium battery in here. It has the inverter all self-contained, which, which made it real nice. It's 100, 1100 watts of power in this little tiny thing by itself. But I took an AGM battery and built a case. I got an AGM battery in series with this thing. We can charge it while we're driving. I put a uh, ran a cable from the battery, put it to a disconnect under the hood, and then I ran the cable back here. And when we're driving, if I want to charge it from the car, all I got to do is flip a switch, and it'll charge this baby while we're driving. I haven't. I really haven't had to do that though since we added uh, both solar panels. It's been really nice. Got plenty of power to run our fridge, run our lights, run a fan. We got plenty of power. It does DC and AC power. You got 120 outlets, 220 outlet, which I know we'll never use. You got cigarette uh, lighter chargers and we have USB chargers this thing has been uh pretty good to us now that we finally got everything tweaked how we want to do it how much did it cost i want to say it was 11 or 1200 dollars. and then the solar panels are about 150 each 125 each and then you got the cables and all that stuff so i guess we got i guess we got at least uh 1500 dollars wrapped up in our in our power system but our patron john and samantha slaughter gave us the battery yeah he gave us he gave us the battery he gave me an agm battery and uh he actually gave me the stuff to build the mounts for the solar panels up top and uh he actually also gave me this box which i took and uh modified a little bit to make sure that i was able to get the battery in there and uh get all my connections coming out the side it looks kind of a mess right now i got I have a really long cord from the solar panels to the battery itself here. I need to cut it and uh, redo the uh, connections and uh, maybe hopefully make that shorter. And then I ran, I ran this little cable up in here, this little piece of tubing, which goes over to our camper top, give us all our power for our lights and everything. Pretty neat, you know? makes things nice for us. Obviously one of the concerns when you are in this type of a camping situation is storage. There's not really a whole lot of room in here for Pelican cases and plus that aggravates me because I gotta get in, I gotta pull it out, I gotta take everything out. It's so frustrating. So one of the first modifications that we did, we actually did this before we went to Montana last year, is we put in these hooks and this rail system so this is some garage stuff we bought this at walmart it was so cheap it was maybe five dollars for the rail and each of these little hooks were maybe three dollars five dollars i don't know the basket was probably the most at ten dollars these baskets are so useful and they hold so much stuff you know things that i need easy access to propane burner candles lighter you know that kind of stuff i just keep in there and we just use the hooks for everything. Usually over here, we'll have our chairs, our blankets, our sleeping bags, well, the kids' sleeping bags, things like that. And then down here, we'll put the heavier items like the bug tent or, I don't even know. Fire pit. The fire pit, that kind of stuff. So up here in the nest, in the sleeping platform, it was a two inch memory foam mattress that came with the tree house and that might be fine for young people <laughs> but for people like me who have old bones we needed a little more comfort so we added this climate air mattress it's a double so it, it's actually a full whatever a double is and you blow it up we use our little air compressor thing blow it up it gives you an additional supposedly three inches. I don't believe it, but that's what it says in the description. 
I still wasn't having enough comfort and that foam mattress was starting to get kind of old and wonky. So we went to Pack and Paddle again and we bought the Sea to Summit air mattresses they're self-inflating which i'm not going to open it because then i'll have to get up here and deflate it but these things you open up this little valve right here and seriously within five minutes it's completely inflated without even having to blow any air you might need to do one puff plug it up it is so thick it's probably it probably sits up about three inches about that thick yeah, it's so inches. comfortable the only bad thing is because we have two we have this giant gap in between where some people <laughs> roll into the middle, causing the other person to roll into the tent. So we're going to cut that mattress that came with the tree house and fit a sliver in between these two mattresses to keep us able to stay in our own spots and not hog up all the room and the blankets and the pillows. Well, there's too many pillows. Mm. Also, having these, we can actually leave our bedding and our pillows in here and not cause problems. We're having a little bit of problem from having too much bedding. There's some wearing and some, I don't even know what you would call it. It's not tearing, but it's, it's getting worn. So we want to try to prevent that and keep the tent intact as possible for as long as possible. And obviously every overlander needs a 12 volt fridge needs yeah. put that in quotes <laughs> and we bought one and we also bought this dometic slide to go with it what's the weight limit on that thing like 300 pounds, 300 pounds. sometimes that dometic probably weighs 300 pounds see i installed this screwed it down to the to the deck it's going to be easy to take out if i want you only got like four screws you're going to undo and uh I didn't screw it directly into the bed of the truck because when I started getting everything ready underneath this rubber mat I cut out a piece of plywood and underneath that I actually have more foam insulation. Some of y'all might remember we changed our door style back in February. We changed it from barn door style to this just hatch flip up. And it's so nice. It's so much easier to manage. Let's put some handles on the inside so we can close it when we're both up in there. But overall, it was a great decision to change these doors. And I suggest if you are thinking about buying a snap tree house, think long and hard about how you are going to manage inclement weather because the barn doors when they're open they're open and they're pretty hard to get closed from the inside and really open from the inside as well well yeah it was and it's hard especially the way we had it if you do the barn doors from top to bottom oh yeah yeah, yeah. And you take the tailgate out i could see where that would be pretty easy we had the barn doors with our tailgate in which made things more difficult because when you open them and you're trying to get in, there was nothing to keep them open. They would just bang on you. I mean, Paula has video somewhere showing that. So yeah, it was very difficult, not horrendous, but it, 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 it made things not uh, comfortable to deal with. Right. This thing has been a great improvement. About the only thing I have negative to say, and it's not really a negative thing. When they sent this to me, I installed it myself. Uh, these little air struts could be a little stronger. Uh, the door wants to sag a little bit, and it's not as bad now. I, I put a new piece of weather strip in here, and ever since I've done that, it's I don't know what it's done. It's kind of helped. For some reason, I guess the uh, weather stripping keeps the door up a little better for some reason. But they're a little weak. I was thinking about changing these out. But for now, it's great. We love it. And some of you guys may remember that we had our windows right here used to flip down. But we also changed this to them to flip up instead it's not a health hazard of hitting your head on them anymore 
our truck got lifted we lifted it in december and when we put the additional lift in it made the flip down door as a table completely obsolete because it was just too high it was over your head yeah if you were sitting in a chair you were reaching up and uh when you had it down especially at night you tended to walk around the truck and it would hit you right in the chin or right in the throat so we decided to change it around uh snap did not assist us in this i did this myself ordered a couple of air struts off of amazon and uh the only thing that was really good snap had already had the holes pre-drilled so all i had to do is rivet in those holes and everything fit perfect it was a joyful moment as you'll see in the video that i'm gonna cut in we both celebrated uh, excessively <laughs> rivet guns are not easy to manage especially when you're weak like i am and you have no upper body strength we also added a small awning we uh saw an ad on facebook marketplace i think it was lady was selling an awning for fifty dollars it's not a great awning we wasn't really sure if we were going to use it so we thought we'd buy it and uh i got these brackets that I manu well actually we have a manufactured for work and uh, my boss John uh, let me have a few of them and I put them to use I got some flat bar that we got bent and uh, I was able to get them bent so it come out of, away from the camper and I mounted two on this side and we put two on the other side so that way if you want to move the awning to the other side it's real easy. We just loosen a couple of bolts, pick the awning up, bring it to the other side. And future plans for this awning is we're going to put the same, what you call that? Brackets. Brackets on the back so that we can stretch our awning out over our tailgate and not have to worry about bringing the bug tent with us in case of inclement weather. Yeah, and we plan on getting a bigger awning for the sides. It's just not quite big enough for, the, for us really, but it'd be good for over the back. Leave us a comment if you have any questions about our modifications. Thanks to our patrons. We appreciate you. See you next time when we pop a top on adventure.